And now look to Adam Bolton to continue the case for the opposition. Uh, well, thank you very much indeed, uh, Mr. President. I was going to say ladies and gentlemen, but I can't, so I'll just settle for trolls and followers. Um, ben, uh, my colleague here, asked me why I was speaking on this side, and I had a very simple answer to him that in my career I've worked for two organisations that were startups, TVM doing the first breakfast television in this country, and then uh, uh, Sky uh, doing the first rolling news. Uh, so uh, I'm not afraid of uh, innovations uh, within the media, and I would uh, like to remind you and indeed uh, the proposers of this motion who've spoken so far that we're not debating whether you like social media or not, we're debating uh, the impact of social media on what I would describe as good journalism, which is probably uh, the mainstream media, the traditional media as we know it, ranging from everything from the New York Times uh, and the BBC uh, all the way through uh, to Sky News and, and BuzzFeed. And I think, you know, what we've got to accept about social media is we all do it. I was looking up uh, Damien Collins' performance on social media uh, and uh, lots of uh, nice pictures of him with his constituents campaigning for a strong and stable leadership in Hythe this morning, uh, out in Folkestone this morning with Theresa May's message of strength and stability for Britain. Uh, but more importantly, we know about uh, Damien Collins' uh, very valuable investigations, and I agree with him almost everything on that, but, you know, when he did his FIFA investigation, uh, he thanked uh, the people following him on Twitter for the extra information they'd given him about corruption at Twitter. And likewise, uh, uh, in his current exposure of the Russians, here he is, Damien Collins, read my comments in Matt Burgess's article, here's the first evidence Russia used Twitter to influence Brexit. Where do you find it? On Twitter. Um, uh, similarly... Uh, well, point of uh, information. You find it in the Times first. Yeah, well, you were advertising on Twitter. <laughs> Uh, and uh, as for Steve Erlanger, I mean, he, like me, is rather fond of cats um, and uh, retweets cats, but there's a, a, a or RTs, but not uh, Russia Today. Uh, and, um, uh, but he does actually tweet the uh, Russian embassy uh, who put out a picture of two cats having a fight. I've never quite understood the significance of that. But, you know, <laughs> the real point about all this is that when we talk about... Uh, social media, we all have views on it, there are things we don't like on it, fake news, but that is not, uh, in my view, uh, the essence uh, of good journalism. Now we heard from Mr Collins about the economic case uh, against uh, uh, the impact of uh, new media, the drop in the stock price for many news organisations, uh, the drop in circulation of print copies, uh, the drop in audiences, the drop in titles and trust. But in fact, you know, when I was speaking to um, uh, my editor at the Sunday Times, uh, he said, uh, fake news, bring it on, the more the better, because what we've seen uh, is that as people look for information, authoritative information uh, which they can trust, uh, new subscriptions to the New York Times online, uh, up by 47% last year, uh, the Washington Post up by 75%, uh, the uh, uh, same, uh, very similar figures for the Financial Times and uh, the uh, Sunday Times and the Times as well. And this is much more than a Trump bump. I mean, there is considerable evidence uh, that people want to go to authoritative sources. In a sense, that is the only unique selling point of uh, good journalism, that people trust it. And actually being exposed to all the uh, rubbish, lies, distortions uh, on uh, social media makes people uh, value and actually put a price uh, on what they're prepared uh, to access. I mean, even The Guardian, uh, which has this sort of bizarre policy of giving away its journalism, uh, now finds that it gets more from its appeals to readers to bail it out, uh, than it actually voluntarily, uh, than it gets uh, from advertising subscription. Now, you can have your own views as to whether Sky News is uh, good journalism or not. I mean, I hope I haven't wasted the last 30 years of my life. Uh, and um, I have to admit, guess what? Followers on Twitter uh, disagree. Um, I asked my researcher, uh, Dr. Tom Roberts, a uh, bit of class there, um, to, uh, uh, in, in the interest of impartiality, look up some of the sort of choice insults uh, about me. Um, uh, Neil Denham, uh, is there any bad news that smirking Adam Bolton won't blame on Brexit or May seems to be itching uh, for a Corbyn-led government? Uh, 
but uh, Tom uh, Delegy says, why are Jeremy Corbyn's voters always censored by Rupert Murdoch's uh, lapdog? Uh, Owen Glendar, you also talk a lot of crap about climate change and Trump. Uh, Willy Wheelie Bin, uh, you are a, a blatant uh, Ramona. Uh, and um, a very angry Stato, uh, Adam Bolton is a smug, sneering, elitist C-word uh, uh, who is leading the precise agenda Sky wants, uh, effing selfish Tory. Uh, now, I, you know, I mean, we're always being told to uh, go out in the country and meet people, but I think that's a bit ridiculous. Um, uh, uh, so, uh, you know, as I say, lots of bad things on social media. Is it doing us uh, any particular harm? Well, Sky News last year had more than a million, a billion views on social media. Uh, we now have as many people accessing Sky News through telephones as uh, watch it on the television screen. Uh, Three million people looked us up on Snapchat Discover the morning after the Brexit vote uh, to know what was going on. And uh, social media, of, co of course, uh, also contributes uh, uh, to us as sources. I think I can claim that when the tabloids were interested in my first marriage breaking up and I was contacted by uh, various of my journalistic friends for a comment, I put out a tweet and I think I was the first person quoted in the British newspapers uh, uh, as, as a tweet. Now, part of the effect of this shakeout is that actually bad journalism as opposed to good journalism or questionable journalism is, or tabloid journalism to use a, uh, another phrase, is finding it much harder to make a living out of uh, subscription. I mean, you know, I enjoy uh, uh, a TV star flaunting her curves on the Mail Online sidebar of shame as much as the next man, but actually uh, the Mail has not found a model that can uh, finance them uh, in the long run through subscriptions, and I think that's a good idea. Instead of which, what we're seeing is that new uh, entrants are coming into the market with the bar much lower. Uh, that can be uh, Guido Fawkes, for example, or The Canary, or Politico, or BuzzFeed, or Axios, or Talking Points Memo, uh, or Coffee House. All of them putting material out there mostly uh, for free, which is of uh, great value to people who want to be better informed, and I would argue much of it good journalism. And What's even. Information? Uh, I don't know, if I may. Um, do you. You referenced the Canary there. Do you think the Canary's reporting that Laura Kunzberg was going to speak at the Conservative Party conference was good journalism? That she was going to speak at the Conservative Party conference? Well, she had been invited to speak at an event, and I think it's perfectly legitimate to uh, uh, discuss that, uh, whether the, or not... The way in which it was uh, done? I, uh, you know, I, I don't have any problem, as a television journalist, being held to account uh, and people asking questions about my journalism. We spend our time asking other people questions. I don't think we should complain when we're challenged, even when we're, we're challenged uh, uh, by our colleagues. Um, and incidentally, I'd say that the whole uh, commercial market in this country would be a damn sight better if the BBC didn't exist, but that's another argument. Um, <laughs> now, um, moving on, um, my definition of news is that uh, if news uh, is, uh, something, is something that someone somewhere doesn't want you to know or information you didn't know before. And I think all this material produced uh, does fall into that category. I also think that uh, with the arrival of the internet, we've also had the arrival of big data. And the ability to process and analyse big data does depend on an interaction between journalists uh, and social media. I don't think it would have been possible uh, to do uh, either the MPs' expenses scandal or the more recent Pestminster, Pestminster sexual harassment scandal without uh, people uh, operating together uh, on uh, the internet and uh, going through that data. We've had some in America, of course, uh, some very big successes. David Fahrenheit got the Pulitzer Prize uh, for turning Donald Trump's own weapon on him uh, of the internet and exposing the fact that Donald Trump's allegedly generous charitable donations were in fact non-existent except when it came to bu uh, buying portraits of himself. Now, uh, Damon also talked about uh, the fang, uh, Facebook, Apple, Netflix, Google, and the damaging impact which they are having uh, on mainstream media. I agree with his effort to try and regulate the mainstream of the uh, new internet media. I have no problem with it. But all I would say is that 
Look at what Twitter's doing today about its uh, blue ticks. Uh, look at uh, the fact that uh, Jeff Bezos of Apple has saved uh, the Washington Post. And uh, these companies are beginning to become uh, more and more mature. I think um, good journalism, I mean, here's an example of good journalism, cover of The uh, Economist, social media's threat to democracy. That's good journalism. Uh, it's a good story, but it also is a way of uh, bringing uh, those uh, organizations that are a bit like the Sorcerer's Apprentice or Frankenstein and his monster uh, under control. So uh, to sum up, very simply, uh, I think that uh, the impact of social media may make us leaner. Uh, it may mean that we've lost the even the easy dependence on the commercial world uh, through advertising, uh, but I don't think it is in any way uh, making our journalism worse.